Hello, this is me, Michael Snape from the Obedience Project. You can catch us on www.topprojects.co.uk. Um, also, we're representing uh, projects in the community, uh, record label signing. Um, yeah, so basically, this is just a brief little show. Um, yeah, so I'd like to know about what you're up to, what you're doing, and where your project is going. Okay, well, my name is David Lawrence. It might be uh, worked in music industry for many, many years. Many, many years. Yeah. Um, okay. The first time I got involved in uh, the Obedience Project was yes. when I met Michael Snape. <laughs> you know who Michael is. Michael is <laughs> a great entrepreneur in the music industry. Um, got it. His foundation actually was, goes back to the early days when the first sort of Brit soul was sort of launched. That's when I first met with Mike. Uh, we've been friends ever since. Um, yes. You know, and it's just grown from there. And what we do That's is we try to look at how best we can use our, our gifts and our crafts to benefit those who are up and coming and, and, and who are in the community. Yes. So within music, um, we try to find out whether there are government schemes that, that are available to help youngsters or if there's uh, entrepreneurs either in to help put things together. We try and find try and find ways of putting projects together in full stop. Yes, that sounds um, great. Yeah, so you know one of the things that's happening right now is the pop up shop here in Peckham, uh, the the Venus project uh, has been invited to come down and take part in that. Yes. And what happens on a daily basis is the doors are open, youngsters can come in. That's right. Uh, Young and old come in and, and just meet the, the crew that's here. Meet the yes, team, yes. Learn about what's going on here. Yes. It's, it's just a way of, of the community coming together and communicating. And that's, that's right. What this is that's about. right. That's so right. So I've come along today to see what's going on. <laughs> that's great. And and like, because I know you do some like sometimes record shops, um, uh, selling vinyl records and yeah. stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. And you've done stuff like you know in America yeah. and certain home music. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, where you've like you know uh, put certain artists on the stage and and also some well-known artists. Yeah. Yeah. Can you tell us a little bit about that and you, just the whole process? Yeah, um, well, um, it, it goes back a long way. I, I, I started when I was around 16, 17 years old as a young DJ. Uh, I was invited out yeah. to the Channel Islands. Uh, I got my first DJ job out there. Um, met a lot of people that I didn't realise that through the business you would actually get to meet people in the music industry. Yes. I just wanted to play records. And so through my DJ uh, uh, work, I started uh, meeting up with groups. Uh, some of the groups go back as far as the, the, the late 70s, early 80s. Uh, you know, and, um, uh, and, and my connection through those groups led on to me joining the music industry as a, a team coffee boy. Yes. I started, started off running, running, running errands and things like that. And then um, I was then headhunted by uh, some companies uh, based in Holland and Germany, uh, which where I learnt uh, the, the craft of a &R in and those kinds of things. Yes. Um, from there, um, it grew pretty fast because what happens is once you're, you get you get no more business, then you know people start to recommend you to different projects and you grow through those projects. Right. Okay. Yes, so, so, so yeah, it, it, it happened that way. That's how I got into the world. Cool, so, cool. So what's the present direction right now? What's, what's, well, what's the focus? Well, I think, I think well, what, what I've actually been doing is I've actually been working with a number of companies who are working with a lot of the African farmers in, in, in and around Africa. That sounds great. In West Africa. That sounds um, great. Yeah, I mean, I'm into a lot of the food stuff that's grown by the African farmers and then what we, what we, we intend on doing is helping the, the, the farmers sell their produce in these countries so that then we can break the cycle of child slavery and, and, ch and child uh, you know, uh, uh, labor uh, that's, that's taking place. So what we've been looking at was, you know, we've been looking at most of the products that have been coming out of West Africa, which is everything from cassava to, you know, to uh, cocoa. Yeah. And we're, we're looking at ways and how we can supply different companies and show them, look, um, this is what this product is. Um, uh, uh, if you help us with these products, you're going to help to break these cycles, which then uh, finances can go towards uh, schooling and different things that, that the children in those countries need. 
And so okay. Would yes. you be able to fuse that sort of, uh, uh, that sort of project yeah. along with entertainment where yeah. you could be able to put on shows to raise finances yeah. for and uh, is there a website or um, Facebook or Twitter information you can give us now so people can get in touch with you or if they need to find you? Well, well they, can go on, they can go online, they can, they can reach me at davidlawrenceathomemusic.com or, you know, um, there's, um, uh, there's different companies that we're working with, um, such as uh, landrich.org. Uh, um, um, but you, but my, if you type in my name, you, you, you'll find a lot of uh, different information. Right, okay, so just David Lawrence or yeah. David Hughes Lawrence? Uh, David, David Lawrence, or, you know, you my, my email address, yes. you want to drop me an email, it's onlymusic at gmail.com, which is O-N with double E, music group at gmail.com. Great. Onlymusic group at gmail.com. That's great. That's really great. Is, is there anything else that you'd like to elaborate on before, before we, we are? Yeah, I'd just, I just like to say that, you know, um, those of you who have just lost faith in what's been happening here in the UK in terms of work, no jobs, no opportunities, it's great to just get, pick yourself up, come out, get, get out of the house, get out, meet people, like, like the groups that are down here at the pop up shop, and just come and talk. Sometimes yeah. when you talk, or you just turn up, you know, you never know what can happen. And things can, you know, opportunities and doors open for you. Don't look, don't look at a situation and say, well, you know what, there's nothing for me, and stay in, in one spot and don't and not grow and, and, and expand. You have a great talent, and whatever it might be, it's, whatever small it might be, it's a talent. And get out here and show us what it is, and you never know what's going to happen. That's really great. That's really great. So, what, what about the Amer America? Are you, are you gonna like go to America to do any projects there, or are you gonna? What, are you well, gonna yeah. As you know, as you know, I've spent you know, a lot of my time, a lot of my life in the States. Yes. Fifteen years. I lived in the States fifteen years, and I worked uh, for a university where I lived. Yes. Uh, America, America is still yeah, a growing society. Um, there's still a lot of opportunities out there for us, as you know, Black British or British. They still love the British uh, culture. So, as long as you are, uh, you can speak the, the British language. Uh, there's something that the Americans love about that. So, you know, next time you go out to the States, you know, pop into a bar or pop into a business or pop into something and just speak to people. And what happens there is people make you make connections, you make you know uh, uh, contacts with people there, and next thing you know, uh, friendships develop. And Okay, well, yeah, well, thanks again, yeah. Thanks no for coming problem. down to see us in Peckham area, southeast 15 area, in the south side, yeah. And so we we'll see each other again, yes? Yes, you guys keep on the work. Well, good, we'll do. Yes. Peace out. Peace. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, Nicholas, uh, so you're from Penn People. Could you um, like, let the people where they can find you, let them know where they can find you and stuff like that? Um, where you can find us, yes. you can find us on www.penpeople.com. You can also follow us on Twitter uh, at penpeople, P E M people. Um, Pen people is an abbreviation for people empowering people. Um, yeah. Okay. Um, so, um, how do you feel about uh, the development at the moment? Um, in the current regeneration, how do you feel about it? Um, I'm neither here nor there, really. Um, personally, I think it's something that will happen. Well, whether you yeah. want it to happen or don't want it to happen. Yeah. And I think my my opinion really is that you know, as a community, uh, and with something happening in our own backyard, it's about sorry. It's like giving everybody the opportunity to actually benefit from right, okay. what's going on okay. is by some way called regeneration. And there is a part of economic regeneration in there. And I you know, I feel that you know, economic generation should be for some and not should be for all yeah. and not for some. Right, okay. Um, so local residents and organisation, yeah? Sorry? So you feel it's for like the local residents and the I think they should be I think, you know, um, Local organisations and individuals should feel part, you know, that they're part of the whole regeneration. Oh, yeah, yeah. It shouldn't be, it shouldn't be a sideshow. 
where you know you see what's going on, you're not really involved in what's going on. And I think from as an as an organisation, I think what we're trying to do is we're trying to find ways in terms of how we can get local residents to have their capacity built so they can deliver projects when projects come up. Because sometimes we don't really get to hear about these projects until the last minute. Yeah. And if we don't have the skills and experience um, of actually delivering a project or the resources to deliver those projects, then you know you're literally out of the frame. Okay, so so um, how do you feel about uh, some of the available buildings? Uh, do you think they should be used more for creating opportunities for the local residents? Well, you know, I don't want to be a bit of a humbug, but you know, the borough's got lots of buildings, but every time you ask, we're told that there isn't any. But yeah, you see a lot of organisations sit at with city tenants. Now, I've argued the case that we should actually be giving some of those properties to local residents and organisations, sorry, and teaching them how to maintain such resources. And, you know, by doing that, what you end up doing, you end up building the capacity of local residents and organisations that they can apply for funding, which then takes off the financial burden on the community council within the borough. Right, okay, and, and, and you know, on the last question, so basically, you know, this is a six weeks program, yeah? And so far we're in the fourth week, yeah? Mm -hmm. And so in the, from, from the first week to the fourth week, how, how much contribution do you feel you've given within the community? I think we've, we've contributed quite a lot to a, lot, a number of people. We've had a number of people come in here asking, you know, that they want to contribute, they want to help out, they want to deliver projects, yeah. and they don't know where to go. And I think this is the point that I've kind of been making. This is the point I've been kind of making that, you know, there's three different spheres, spheres when you look at Grass, you know, there's three different spheres. You're looking at grassroots, you're looking at community, and you're looking at the voluntary sector. Cool. Now, you know, grassroots is for people like me who literally come from the estate. We want to do things in our community. We want to provide services and want to help people who don't have the chances to get those kind of opportunities, to get different opportunities. And I think once people finish working with us, it's for us to then pass them on to, you know, the community groups, the second tier groups who can then build up that capacity even more because obviously, you know, the, with the size of our organisation and, and, you know, and the lack of infrastructure, I think what then means, what it then means is rather than us duplicating, we've already sat down with our own little niche. You know, it's almost like being an, an A&R &A person. Cool, cool, cool. You know, you cool. find the person, you know, in their raw element and then, you know, you buff them up like a diamond and then you pass them on to the diamond dealer who is the intermediary which is the community group, and then they then pass it on to the voluntary sector. And you know, that way you see things growing and you see projects that are more in touch with the community. Sounds great. All right, so um, this is me, Michael Snay from The Obedience Projects. Uh, you can get us on uh, the website, topprojects.co.uk. Um, and it's been nice speaking with you. Thank you, and nice speaking with you. And uh, so we'll catch up soon then, yes? Yeah, we will indeed. Nice one.